it going? I'm Alex, and this is my Traxxas Backslash. I'm gonna give you guys a little rundown of uh, where it started, what I used to build it, and why I built it, because, you know, it is a good question. Uh, it started its life as a Traxxas Slash 4x4 uh, with a high center of gravity chassis. I picked it up off of Facebook Marketplace for a great deal because I, I figured it didn't really make sense to pick up a brand new truck and then strip a bunch of parts off of it and, and replace a bunch of things right off the bat to build this truck or buggy. So uh, I picked it up, uh, used, needing some love, and I uh, went ahead and stripped the whole thing down, put all new bearings in it, rebuilt the diffs, all the, the stuff you want to do when you pick up a used truck. Uh, and I got it nice and refreshed, but I, uh, I decided to drive it as a slash for a little while just to you know, enjoy it in that state and kind of decide what I wanted to pick up for the backslash conversion. Um, the fun part about backslashes is that everyone's kind of a little bit different. You can build it how you want and you can use whatever parts you want. Um, there's just endless options of what you can use for every little aspect from the body, the wing, you know, how you want to set your suspension up. Uh, it's just a, it's a really fun way to build a buggy. Um, and personally, I've always loved buggies. I think they're neat to you know, drive, they look cool. Um, my neighbor growing up had a bunch of buggies because he raced, uh, he was like a, a sponsored driver and I'd always see him ripping us up and down the road and I fell in love with them back then and uh, one of my first builds was a Bandit like 15 years ago and uh, so I just figured you know, I wanted to build a buggy and uh, it didn't really make sense for me to pick up a, a race chassis. There aren't any tracks around here and so if I picked up a, like a nice quality, like a team associated chassis or something like that, uh, it just, it wouldn't make sense. Cause then what, I'm gonna go bash a finely tuned race chassis. Like, you know, we're, we're driving on dirt bike tracks and, and BMX tracks and gravel lots and baseball fields. And it just, you know, it wouldn't make a ton of sense to get a nice quality race chassis, but I still wanted to build, uh, to build a buggy. So I was looking at, uh, you know, like the Arma Typhoon Success, that was another option. Um, and uh, I was kind of comparing them and the, the Typhoon's definitely a better buggy overall than a Backslash is. Um, however, I've got a bunch of slashes, I'm familiar with Traxxas, parts availability is super, super plentiful. Um, so I decided that it made the most sense just to build the Slash into a Backslash. Um, cause I'm, I'm familiar with the platform, I have tons of extra parts, I, you know, it, it just made it a lot easier. and. Uh, so I went ahead and picked that slash up off Marketplace. I'll, I'll put some clips here of uh, how it looked when I first got it and some of the, the process I went through just to get it refreshed and driving. Um, and then after a while, I decided it was time to start tearing it down and I had piled up a little bit of parts to do the conversion. And uh, I'll give you a brief rundown. I'm gonna add all the part numbers for the parts I used for the conversion, as well as the parts that are just general modifications I did with this. Um, it's a pretty basic setup. There's a lot more I could do to it. However, I'm enjoying it in this stage and then I'll go from there and kind of, you know, work through upgrading it as I find, you know, weak spots and stuff. But we're going to start off with the body. Um, this body is from a low C8 3.0. Uh, it fits beautifully on the chassis. It, it's super, super good uh, fitment for being from a different car. Um, you can do all sorts of things for body mounting. I have the ProLine screw-on uh, body mount system pieces on here, um, but I just I got tired of unscrewing the screws. It just, I don't know, it, was, it wasn't it was worth the time. And uh, being that the body is as low as it, as it is, it doesn't need to be like, crazy secure because the body's not taking a ton of the hits. You're, you know, you're landing the wing, the strut tower, or the shock towers, like it, you know, you, you hit the body a little bit here, but it's not getting ripped off the chassis. So I ended up going with a um, really simple Velcro mount there. Um, it's super easy to put on. You, know, you can just slap it on there and you can pick it up by it. It's, it's nice and tight and I used a real small piece of Velcro. Um, so it's nice that you were able to, or that I was able to just do that and leave it be. Um, I had used the ProLine setup, like I said, with the Traxxas center brace, and I had drilled and tapped uh, a hole in the brace so I could thread the, uh, the pins into that. However, with the Traxxas center brace, the body ends up sitting pretty high because that brace you know, sits about here in the front and about there in the back. I, I know you can't really tell super well in the video for 
um, how much higher, but it, it's higher. So I went with the, uh, the VG Racing brace. It's a lot more low profile and it's still pretty strong and durable. Um, it's a bummer it doesn't match the, the aluminum stuff, but not a big deal. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where we're gonna start with the mod. So VG Racing chassis brace, uh, Traxxas GTR shocks, with the VG Racing springs, I uh, really like how those springs feel. They work excellent. Um, the you know the ride quality and uh, handling is exactly where I wanted it with these. So um, yeah, I, I did 40 weight front, 50 weight rear shock oil. Shock weight is completely up to you. You know that's always been a preference, um, but that's just what I chose to do. Um, I upgraded the servo with a, a higher torque servo. It's nothing too fancy. It's a lightweight car. I didn't need anything crazy. However, the stock servos are just pretty weak. So I went with that as an option. Um, the truck, when I bought it on Facebook, came with a Spectrum. Uh, it's a 85 amp, um, 4,000 kV. I, I don't remember that, could be wrong. I, that'll all be in the description, but it's a really basic Spectrum setup, but it's three, uh, 2S, 3S capable and it, it rips. It, it's got plenty of power. Um, does everything I need it to. It's, you know, I'm, I'm happy with how it feels. Um, next up, we went with a sledge wing and a sledge wing mount. Uh, it fits on there really nicely. Um, you just have to put some screws here, which isn't the best looking way to do it. I haven't found a better one. Uh, however, the bottom screws, right there, if you look, I'll put a better picture up, but they mount right into the back bulkhead. Uh, so it worked really nicely and it was kind of a seamless mount there in the, in the back set at least. Um, I think the wing is the perfect size. It looks great. It's readily accessible. I have a sledge as well so I can, you know, pick up some spare uh, wings and have them on deck and use them for both vehicles. Um, they're also readily available, easy to access, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, next up, I, I little bits, I did like the... Uh, the green motor plate off of a Traxxas Rustler Ultimate. Uh, I did the green front and rear tie bars. You can see it peeping through there and up there. Really just a subtle thing, but you know. Um, I went with the green nuts, simple, but you know. Um, I'm, there's, a, there's a lot of things I wanna do eventually on this. One of the things I don't love is that I'm currently running the Traxxas 12 mil to 17 mil hex conversion to be able to run the buggy wheels. Um, they only make it blue. I'd like it to be silver or green. I think I might go with the hot racing ones, um, but that's something that I can change anytime. And these work fine for now, but you know, little details. Um, I am running the Traxxas sway bar kit. Um, some Traxxas green links. Um, I have shimmed the servo to get the uh, servo saver a little stiffer. Uh, I'm running the extreme heavy duty gray axles. Um, they've held up super well. I decided to try them out and see how they go before going to MIPs and these have held up to everything I put them through and they're a lot cheaper. So I went ahead and just picked those up and they've been great. So definitely enjoying those. Um, and I have the LCG chassis. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to do this with an HCG. Uh, buggies tend to sit low and look goofy and drive weird with the high center chassis in my personal opinion. Um, but that's just where I went. I dyed the chassis black. I think it looks way nicer. Uh, I've never been a fan of the gray, but it's a nice black. It looks beautiful. You have to shave the little tabs for the nerf bars um when you do that but aside from that everything else fits fine um i have the center differential uh, i've rebuilt front and rear differentials on it i'm running some kind of aggressive fluid in them because i built it to bash initially i'm going to redo the diff soon to uh, make it a little more handling friendly but right now i'm at um, i think 500k rear and 100k front i wanted it more tail happy Definitely wouldn't recommend that. It's a little aggressive, um, but that's where it's at now. So, you know, I think I'm just gonna do like a 100K front, 200K rear, and then somewhere 
around 100 in the center, maybe 50 in the center. I'm not too sure yet. We'll see. Um, next up, I am running RPM arms front and rear. Um, they've been great. They're durable. They're easy to access. You can get them, on, you know, anywhere you need to. Um, one of the things that I really like that I stumbled upon by accident is uh, I'm running Rustler and Stampede 4x4 shock guards in the front. Um, it might be a little dark, but I'll put some pictures in here that show it better. But I have them in the rear as well. You can see there. I think it looks neat. It goes well with the buggy look. I think it's just a really fitting mod and uh, and it protects the, the shocks too, which is obviously a perk. Um, but I know this has been kind of all over the place. I'm gonna put a list with all of the mods done specifically for the backslash conversion and then a separate list of all of the other things that I've done to the chassis just to make it drive the way I want it to. Um, but overall, a brief rundown for the backslash conversion, you need the body. You can do a variety of different bodies. You can do the low C 2.0s, 3.0s, 4.0s. Um, you can do Arma Typhoon bodies, and then there's a, a bunch of various like J-Concept bodies and Proline bodies you can use. There's a, a ton of options, but um, you can go crazy with bumper decisions. I went with a Stampede front bumper. Uh, I removed the upper portion of the front bumper, it just unscrews. So it's just the lower piece to keep the low profile bumper. For the rear, I did the same thing. I used just the lower piece of it and uh, trimmed it a little bit to get it the way I wanted it. Um, and I think it looks great. Um, if you run sway bars, you will have to use the piece from the rear bumper that the sway bar mounts to. I trimmed it off. Um, if you can see that, you can see I trimmed off the portion of the, the sway bar mounts to um, so that I can still retain the sway bar mount. Um, because that is part of the bumper that I did not use, but you know, it works now. Um, next up, I did the LCG chassis. Um, I did the sledge wing, sledge wing mount, uh, 12 to 17 mil hex conversion. MIP makes them, Hot Racing makes them, Traxxas makes them. There's a bunch of companies that make them. You just have to make sure that they will work with whichever axles you have because the axle shaft diameters are different. Like if you go the techno axle or, you know, they all have different um, outer shaft diameters and some of the um, conversion pieces will not fit with them. But I am running these Traxxas Gray Extreme Heavy Duty axles with the Traxxas 12 to 17 mil conversion. I'll put the part numbers in the description so you know, but that one definitely works. Um, and, uh, you know, any 12 or 17 mil buggy wheels will work fine. That's all preference. You can do some knobbier ones if you want. You can find street wheels, all sorts of stuff like that. There's endless ones. Um, but I'm gonna pull up my list real quick and make sure I'm getting the right one and the all of the parts. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. So the only other thing um, I did is the VG chassis brace. You do want a chassis brace on the LCG chassis. They don't have as much strength to them as the HCDs from what I've read, um, but the Traxxas one doesn't really fit with this body because on the front, it'll rub on the Traxxas one. And uh, so this one fits on there nicely, nice and uh, snug, and it, it gets the job done. So that's where we're at. This is my backslash. It's pretty basic to do these. You can do them however you want. There's a million different ways to do it. Um, I'll definitely be revamping it down the line. I want to do a bunch of little things, like I want to do the aluminum steering knuckles just to get that uh, little slop out of the steering there. Um, I want to swap out my, my steering links with some green ones. I have not found ones that match the rest of the ones I'm running, but not a big deal. Um, and, you know, we'll just kind of go through and, and enjoy it and find the parts I want to upgrade and, you know, break them, replace them, all that kind of stuff. But uh, that's the rundown. Um, I'll bring it over here for a second. So I'll give you a little closer look at everything on this. This is, uh, let's see, sorry, I'm pulling you off the, the tripod. So as you can see, you can see my, the green motor plate there. I love that. It's a little, nice little touch. The green tie bar. There's that sway bar mount, a little better view of it. 
you can see this piece here is where the swim bar mounts to. So I had to cut that off and that's that rear lower piece. So you have a nice rear bumper, but nothing crazy. You can go with a bigger piece, but um, that's all I really wanted. Um, there's the VG springs and the GTRs. Uh, here's, so here's the screws for the sledge wing. It's not the best mount, but I will figure out a better option. But right now I've got these screws through the tower with a washer. Uh, I put a zip tie on there just for safe measures, but on the back side, it mounts right into the, the casing there, which is nice. Um, and then here are the, uh, the mud guards in the front. Uh, I just, or the, the, sorry, the shock guards. I just think they added a nice look to it. Um, there's the rear ones. It's a, it's a subtle touch, but you know, it's a neat look. Um, and so that's, you know, that's the main, the main stuff. You can see the, uh, you know, RPM arms, uh, the dyed chassis, which I still, I, like, I love the dyed chassis. I think it looks fantastic compared to the gray. Um, but yeah, that's the, the gist of it. Um, I'm going to add some, some photos and videos of the build process and where it sits now. Um, but that's the, the gist of it. And if you have any more questions, definitely feel free to reach out and I will answer them to the best of my abilities. So here's how she finally sits. This is the end. Um, if you want to see the build from start to finish from when I first bought the slash getting to this point, um, I'm going to attach a bunch of clips from the whole build process and you can kind of see where it started, where it got to, and the in-between process when it was still a slash, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it won't be a super complete video of the process because I was filming just clips here and there. Uh, but if you're interested in that part of it, carry on, keep watching, and I'll add a bunch of clips of that from here on out. So, that's that. Right, Otis? Alright, so here are the little roaches. The body's pretty chopped up and rough and dirty, but that doesn't really matter since we'll be going with the backslash anyways, so we're going to be switching to a new body and whatnot, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the guy didn't want to even clean it, I guess probably helped with my deal but it's got a spectrum set up it's got some big bore shocks in it rpm front arms nothing too crazy um, mostly just filthy and really needs a good cleaning but it's gonna be a great start and uh, the price was right so we're we're off to a good start here but you can tell it's uh, in need of some love with, you know, missing screws, screws backed out all over. Need some wiring cleaned up here. So mechanically, uh, we're gonna find out the condition soon enough, but, uh, you know, a little stuff, the tires debuted, but we're putting different wheels on. Looks like the big bore shocks are either blown or didn't get tightened down or something. Um, kind of nasty noise from the drivetrain. I don't know if it's a boo, maybe gear mesh. We'll see. We're going to tear it apart and find out. But yeah, so this is a starting condition. All right, so we're back inside. We're pulling it apart to kind of give it a little bolt check and uh, look at that noise. And what I've found so far is first of all, the uh, pinion's loose, so that's not great. But I also noticed that the uh, spur gear is very loose. The guy said he replaced it recently, but it looks like he may have not tightened anything down. So we're gonna pull this all apart and get that sorted out before we go take it out for a rip.
All right, so we got that spur gear out, and uh, what I found was that the uh, screws are absolutely not tight at all. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and pull this out, lock tight them, and get it tightened up. We've got the, the chassis dying right now, and we're going to come back over here and start installing some bearings. I've literally gone apart, gone through and disassembled all of the, the differentials, the whole chassis, everything. Just, you know, and we've got... A whole bunch of bearings, slipper clutches, got a drive shaft. Um, we're going to go through and just replace anything that has any signs of wear because I don't want to have to pull this thing apart again. So uh, let's get to it. All right, just so I don't get ahead of myself and forget to take some clips. Uh, so I went through and basically I did new bearings in the bell crank for the steering because it had plastic bushings and that's no good. Uh, um, new bearing in the motor mount. The diffs are all uh, reassembled with all fresh bearings, uh, new gear oil, um, and I went through and added grease back into the differential as well, front and rear. Uh, so those should be all set. Uh, I upgraded the slipper clutch to the bigger pressure plate and uh, um, friction disc. And I added the little aluminum spacer in there because the plastic ones like to melt. So this is all ready to go. Chassis is just drying now. It's uh, not that one, the low center gravity one. And uh, we're just about ready to be able to reassemble it with all the new parts. So this is it's getting there. So there's various things that I'm going to change on it, like the, uh, the RPM front control arms. I'm going to change out to black ones so they match because now they just kind of look out of place. But... Um, this is how it's right now, the ugly green wheels and stuff, but, uh, we've, got uh, we've done a bunch of little changes, most of which you won't be able to see, but some of which are, you know, fairly noticeable. Um, so I've gone through and I've added the Traxxas brace, the Traxxas aluminum drive shaft, uh, motor fan down here, uh, obviously the low center gravity chassis that I dyed black and I think it looks beautiful. It looks really nice and it, it really pops or makes the colors pop on the uh the green bits because now against the black instead of gray it looks sharp uh we've got big bore shocks on it uh some hd axles in the back i'm gonna order some for the front eventually but i haven't gotten to it yet um i went through and did literally every single bearing on the car i've done like the bell crank bearings i've done diff bearings i've done drive shaft bearings wheel bearings Every single bearing on the car has now been replaced with fresh ones that we don't ever have to worry about that. Um, I'm sure there's stuff I'm missing, but yeah, we're running the Spectrum 4000 kilovolt system with an 85 amp ESC. It came with the car, uh, so I'm just going to use it. It's it's fine. It's I, I mean, I prefer the the Traxxas Valenian setup, and I'm sure the, like the Hobby Wings and other competitors would be a more suitable option, but I have it. We're going to use it, and... Just enjoy it for now but yeah so some of the little changes i'm going to do like i said the front control arms i'm going to change all these plastic links with actually adjustable ones because you know it should be adjustable so i can actually get everything right tuned but but yeah here's how it looks it's uh it's definitely a completely different truck from when i first picked it up and uh it feels real good to see it actually all together now and looking sharp so here's the final look as a slash 4x4. This is it with the original body that came on it. Uh, I cut it out a little extra to make it look nice and tough. Uh, and then I went ahead and put this ultimate body on it. And uh, yeah, it's sitting on Raptor wheels with the Proline body mounts. Looks great. Loved it. Um, but then I went ahead and did the backslash swap. So thanks again for watching. And any questions at all, please feel free to ask.